because we are journeying through Romans. Everybody say journeying through Romans. We're going through the epistles. We're doing them verse by verse exposition. And we made our way to Romans. We're going to be in Romans for a while. Amen. All right. It took us three weeks to get out of chapter number one. And we got 15 more to go. Come on. Say amen. Hallelujah. But look at somebody say, be right. Be right. Be right. Romans is about how to be right with God. Everybody say, how to be right with God. Mm, that's what we're looking at. Just how to be right with God. We looked at how to be joyful, how to be rich, how to be complete. Now we're looking at how to be right with God. Amen? Very important. Okay? And we said that sincerity is not enough. Say, say sincerity is not enough. You know, in my studies, I was studying about um, pilots. You know, you have to, you, you learn your, your two phases of it. You learn how to be a, uh, what they call a ground pilot and then an instrument pilot. The instrument pilot is when you, you know, if you're flying and you run into a bank of clouds, you cannot tell, you get what you call spatial distortion. Amen? So you don't know up from down, right, right from left, and you have to trust the instrument. Everybody said, trust the instrument. Amen? And then our Christian walk, we, some con we come into clouds, isn't that right, in life. And we have to trust the instrument. Lift up the instrument and say, this is the instrument panel. All right, we can't trust our feelings. Many of a pilot, I as I was reading this, many of a pilot dies because they felt that it was going up when actually it was going down. And they crashed because you can't, you can't, t you can't tell the difference. And you have to look, and they, and they beat, and they drum into these, Trainees, you must trust the instruments. I must trust the instruments. And we talked the last time about our emotions. You can't trust them. Say amen. We talked about our intellect. Say we can't trust that. No, we got to trust what? You got to trust the instrument. Got to trust the instrument, which is what? The word of God. Amen. Right. We talked about that. Okay. So let me do a quick review. Um, let me read down. We're going to read down. We're going to do half of it. Because we ain't going to get through the whole thing tonight. We're going to read from verse 1. I'm going to read down to probably verse 16. And then we'll come back. And I'm just going to make some comments on some of this. Amen. Okay. Uh, you can put it up. Chapter 2. It says, With therefore thou art inexcusable. Say inexcusable. Inexcusable, man. Whoever thou art that judges for therein you, wherein you judge another, you condemn as yourself. For thou that judges doest the same things. Keep going. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Keep going. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth to what? The goodness of God leads us to repent. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasure up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deed. That those who by patience continuous in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But to those that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that is evil, that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Say amen. For as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the what? Doers. The doers of the law shall be justified. Say amen. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves, which show which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, 
and their thoughts the means which accusing or excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Say amen. Now, review. Uh, we started off by reviewing. The first thing we looked at is the history of Saul, Paul. Say, say Paul. Who was this guy called Paul? We found out who he was. He was a Pharisee. And he had been uh, persecuting the, the church. The church was, was small. I mean, the church started off, what, 12, 70, 3,000, what have you. Amen? I was watching uh, uh, on YouTube, I was watching the first thousand years of Christianity. First thousand years. I mean, 2,000 years, right? And how, how Christianity started off with as a sect, a very small group of people up in the upper room, and this thing literally took over the world. Amen? It is the largest, it is the biggest, largest religion, quote unquote, in the world. Amen. Over 2,000 years, and they, and Satan tried everything he could to stamp it out. But the Bible says, what? Well, Jesus said, upon this rock, how do I build my church and the gates of hell shall what? Not prevail against it. Well, Paul, we know his history was he was trying to stamp out the church. He had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And he became Paul the Apostle. Amen. Now, the next thing we looked at was not ashamed. Said not ashamed. We're not ashamed over the gospel. We talked about not being ashamed of the gospel. We zero in on, on Romans 16, 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the good news. Say good news of Christ. For it is the power. Say power. Power means the ability to be and do. Say power means the ability to be or do. That's what it is. The ability to be and do. I'm not ashamed of the, of the gospel of Christ. But it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believe it. We said that some of the things was, we, I can't review everything. You got to get the CD. He says, uh, he says, it's good news. It's good news. Yes, it was good news, right? It's the power of God. It's to everyone that believe. Amen. And uh, it's a simple truth. So we've got to get the, the, the CD on that. And then we looked at, is God mad? Look at the Bible say, is God mad? Yeah. Amen. And we, from Romans chapter, from Romans 18, I mean, first, uh, first chapter 18, it goes on the devolution of man. Everything spirals down, right? So why is that? Well, we have to look at the wrath of God before we can appreciate the grace of God. Let me say that again. You got to look at how bad things were before you, before you can appreciate how good things is. Give me a better amen. Amen. You got to look at it. See, if, because if you, if you give somebody the good news and they don't think they're bad, it's not good news. Right? So he spent the first portion from verse 18 down to the end talking about how man had devolved, okay? And it was a pretty rough list. Wasn't that right? Very rough list, okay? So this first section is the wrath of God. Say the wrath of God. Then we're going to look at the grace of God. Say the grace of God. Then the plan of God. Say the plan of God. Look at somebody say, God has a plan for you. Yeah, he got a plan for every one of us. You didn't just come here like, you know what you're doing? I'm just chilling. There ain't no chilling. Look at say, ain't no chilling in the kingdom. Everybody got a plan. Everybody got an assignment. Say everybody. All right. And then we're going to look at the will of God. Say the will of God. Remember, doctrine determines doing. Say doctrine determines doing. The doctrine that I believe determines what I will do. A believing, say believing, determines behavior. And you see somebody say, what is that, that woman, that, what that woman, that woman, what's she doing? What's wrong with her? That's what she believed. Whatever she's doing, she believes it. Whatever he's doing, he believes it. So whatever I do, I believe. Now here's, here's the, most of us think that we operate on a conscious level, but you don't. They have found out that 90% of your decisions are, are subconscious. And your subconscious mind, that's what you do, what you do, because what's in your subconscious mind. Say amen. 
All right, looking for I said, I got to get this mind together. Yeah, I got to get the mind of Christ. See, when we get to Romans chapter 12, <laughs> he says, I beseech you, what, brethren, to present your body, what, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, what, service, and be not conformed. Conformity comes from the outside, outside pressure on you. Be not conformed to the, the world, but be you what? Transformed by the renewing of your what? Say, my mind is the problem, and my mind is the answer. God deals with you the way he made you. Very important, all right? And I was reading this. I was going to put this in there later, but let me just say this. Uh, I heard this principle that whoever you de deem, whoever I deem, say whoever I deem, the most important person in my life, I will conform myself to become like. So who are you trying to be like? See, now that's a principle. You know the other principle I taught you that whoever you need acceptance from, you will adjust your behavior to please. So who do you who do you really people can you can say you need acceptance from God, but who are you really trying to please? See, you shall know them by their what? Works. Okay? Now that's some food for y'all to chew on. Give me a sea lie out there. <laughs> so Paul deals with four classes of people. Say four classes. I'm going to look at four classes. The first one is the ungodly. Say the ungodly. And then he deals with the educated moralists. Mm. The educated moralists. Then he deal with the religionists. You know there's a religionist? We're going to deal with all of them tonight. And then he deal with the believers. Somebody said, that's me, that's me, that's me, right? That's four classes of people. But he deal with three classes first. Now, the first class he dealt with is the ungodly moralist. I mean, the ungodly. Say the ungodly. Now, the ungodly was found in verses 18 down through 34, 32. Yeah, people would say. You're right, Paul. Look at them people. Look at them, you know, them lesbos and homos and, and all that, right? Yeah, them people, they, they're ungodly. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what the moralists would say. Now, I told you this. Some people didn't think they need that much saving. I want that to sink in. I, I wasn't that, I wasn't a rank sinner. Yeah, Kelson, I didn't parade around in my tutu and all this kind of, you know how they how brazen people are. The ungodly are actively, say actively, defying God. Actively. Remember, we, we found out that they know what they're doing is wrong, but they do it anyway. And not only do they do it, but they encourage others to do it. They look for ways of being more wickeder than ever, than before. They, they look for shock value with you. And everybody say, yeah, they are going to hell. They, they are going to hell. Right? We can see them. These are atheists, agnostic. I mean, they try to get people not to believe in God. I mean, they, they even spend money on campaigns on the television. Yeah, they're right. Trying to get people. They ain't no God. They ain't no God. They know there's a God. But they don't care. They know what they're doing is wrong, but they don't care. Are you getting this? So we all can conclude, yes, dumb people need God. <laughs> That's what the other two groups of people say. I remember when at my job, there was a young, there was a man on their name. I, I won't say his name, but let me just say his name was Jim. So Jim, he was a stone alcoholic. I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't work drunk. I mean, he was drunk during the day. And, uh, they, I, for whatever reason, they kept him on. Uh, well, you know, they, never, they didn't fire him enough. He come in, get in the corner, sleep, do what he wanted to do. We had union back there too. Now, you know what I'm talking about, right? And so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm witnessing to people. You know, I'm witness. I witness to Jim, and I also witness to the other guy. And I remember, I remember this guy came to me. He said, Leroy, you know that stuff you're talking. That's that's uh, you know that. 
Jim really need that what you talk. That's what he said to me. And the Holy Ghost said the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gave me an answer, Sonia. And the Holy Ghost said, tell him it doesn't matter whether you're in the front of the boat or the back of the boat if the boat is sinking. Did you get that? So it doesn't matter whether you're in the front of the boat or the back of the boat if the boat is sinking. Let me give you a better, let me give you a better illustration. It doesn't matter whether you're in economy or first class if the plane is crashing. Say amen. Well, he understood exactly what I said. And he went off with a huff because he was a moralist. I don't drink, I don't drink, I don't get drunk. You know, I may have a, I may have a couple of cocktails every once in a while. But I'm a good husband. I'm a good this. This is a moralist. I'm a good this. I'm a community activist. I participate in the marches and the protests. I give the care and UNICEF and all of the other steps and steps and stuff out there, right? You know, I'm on this board. I'm on all of these boards. I'm on the, you know, I am a good person. And Paul said, no, you're not. It's for you too. Say me. <laughs> The moralist trusts in his own acts of goodness. Right? So I don't need the gospel because look what I do. That's a moralist. And there's a lot of people like that. Matter of fact, the moralist really sometimes put Christian to shame. And that right, Kelsey, come on. They got more integrity. Right? They got they, they put they put Christian to shame. Shame. The only thing they don't have is Jesus. And because they don't have Jesus, they don't have what they need. Can you imagine standing before the king of king? I mean, standing. Be First of all, you're going to be on the beamer seat. That's the wrong place to be anyway. The white throne judgment. Come on, say amen. Oh, it's already a done deal. And now you're going to put up your works against the works of Christ. If I said that's a moralist. <laughs> and then you have the religionists. Oh my gosh. Very religious. Right? People say, are you religious? I am not religious. Facebook, I am not religious. Religion is man's attempt to please God. Christianity is what God has done for man. Christianity is based on relationship, not on works. The religiousness trusts in a system of religious acts, such as water baptism. If you ain't baptized, you ain't going to, going, you're not going to heaven. No. They trust in church membership. I'm a member of ABC Church. Are you saved? I'm a member of it. ABC Church. Are you saved? I'm a member of ABC Church. Are you saved? I'm a member of ABC Church. ABC Church ain't saved you, baby. Oh, here's another one. Are you saved? I'm a Baptist. Are you saved? I'm a Methodist. We'll get kicked off of Facebook, but it's right. <laughs> Are you saved? I'm I'm a, I'm Kojic. Are you saved? I'm Adventist. What else out there? Where the faith? Where the faith won't take save you? No. Only one person will save you. Who is he? Jesus. Who is he? Jesus. 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 Another thing that religion is trusting. Well, my dad, my mama was the state mama. And my daddy was the bishop. Coming from a Christian family won't save you. God has no grandchildren. All God has is children. See, people got all this kind of stuff, right? All this kind of observance of special days. Seventh day of Venice. Wait, what day you worship on? 
I wish it every day myself. I don't know about you. I'm not stuck on Saturday or Sunday. Come on, say amen. To eat or not eat, certain foods don't save you. People are like, I don't eat pork. Well, you don't. That, go ahead on. I'll, you, I'll take that chop. Come on, say amen. i take the ribs. <laughs> amen. Works. Works don't save you. Food don't save you. Observation of special days don't save you. Getting on your knees, praying seven times to Mecca don't save you. Humming and meditating don't save you. Seeking out your spiritual guide don't save you. Say amen. And a lot of people, I'm telling you, people, people are... Uh, belief. And so Paul said, now, now why I'm saying all this, because, why, see, Paul got to address all these people because, because, because the moralists say, you're right about them people, look at them people. Oh, look at them clubbing, look at them out there acting a fool, yeah, they're going to hell. Let me tell you, you can sit up in your house and never go to a bar, never smoke crack, never do dope, never fornicate, and all of that, and still go to hell. Say amen. But he had to deal, because you see now, he has, he's dealing, he's spending, he's first spending these first three, three chapters dealing with why God is hostile. It is the greatest insult to God to reject his son. After what Christ did? I mean, God, he comes here. God was manifested in the flesh, become a human being. And I, I heard a song today, he, he was crucified on a hill that he created. A tree that he made to grow. Man, I tell you, I'm going to be just straight up honest. If I was God, I'd have said, Zubaya, ta. The Father, I'm sorry. We're going to have to start all over again. <laughs> I'm just zapped everybody down there. Come on, talk to me. He dies to die. He dies for the whole. And then you, moralists. Now, see, the other people know they need saving. That first group said, yeah, Jerry, yeah, apostles, yeah, I, sh- I need saving. Praise God, I need saving. <laughs> but the other one thinks, I'm good enough. When we get to Rom- Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Paul said, all. How many? All, all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have failed to meet God's standard. What is God's standard? Jesus. All have failed and come short of the glory. The standard of God is Jesus. And the test, and see, and we'll get there. But the moralists and the religionists, they want God to grade on a curve. And he doesn't. For there is no what? Respect a person with God. And the, the thing about it, we read in the verse here, that they're going to, he's going to give everybody a chance to stand before, the, before him with what they did, but there is no defense lawyer. Only the judge. Now, Signs of religion. Everybody says signs of religion. How do I know? In, anybody here? I, I used to be a, a re, I'm a reformed Pharisee. Anybody in here beside me? Thank God. Wave the hands for the reformed Pharisees. The for, here's the number one. Blame, the blame game. The Pharisee, the religion is played a blame game. You're always pointing finger at people. Well, look at that drunk over there. Look at that. Look at that. That prostitute over there. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Amen. They play the blame game. But remember, like somebody said, you got one pointing out and three pointing back. Now, I told her, okay, I'm gonna, okay Lord. I, I, I use this illustration. Reli- you know, church people can be very religious. Matter of fact, most of them are. Oh, I remember 
we were talking, oh, you got to do this. And, and uh, I was talking to the pastor one time. He said, I said, now, I want y'all to hear this. Because some, some of y'all might get religious when I say this. Here's a man born again. Say born again. Let's just say both of them born again. A man and a woman born again. And they end up in a motel. And they die. In the act. Where they going? Some of y'all, the religion is coming out. I can see it right now. Right? Oh, he said they're going straight to hell. Hell is going to burn in the hell fire. All unbelievers going to hell. All liars going to hell. All foreign players are going to hell. Okay. I said, you, you and your wife get in an argument. And you leave home mad. And at a four-way stop, you get broadsided and you get killed. Where are you going? I'm, I'm going to heaven. No, you're not. You didn't forgive. You didn't get that right. He didn't know us to do good and do us. And not to him, it is sin. All unrighteousness is what? Sin. God don't grace sin. Oh, that's where people get, you know, we get this venial sin and carnal sin. That, 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 that's religion. You didn't forgive. Let me give you another one. <laughs> You're leaving a meeting. Y'all was talking about the brother. Gossiping at the brother. Gossiping at the sister. And you get broadsided at, the, at that infamous four-way call. <laughs> Stop. And you die and go, where you going? Most just said she's going to heaven. <laughs> There is no little sin and big sin with God. Sin is sin. And he covers it all. Now, is that a license for you to go out there and just fornicate and gossip and lie and talk about people? How many of y'all know people don't need license? They don't need no license. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Say amen. But the religion is... It's pointing. Listen, what we need to do, pray, pray for the person. Christianity, religion, not Christianity, is the only so-called religion that shoots his wounded. Instead of restore, if a brother or sister be overtaken in a fault, you that are what? Spiritual are to do what? Restore. Not shoot them. Not kill them, but restore. Say restore. That's what we're supposed to do. The prodigal went out there and spent all his money on hollets. Spent all the father's money. Ain't that right? Ended up poor or ended up destitute. Ended up out there uh, 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 feeding pigs and ready to eat what the pigs ate. When he came back home, guess what? The father met him on the way coming back. That was unheard of in the Jewish culture. But that was talking about God. He said, I came to seek and save those that was what? Lost. How many people was lost in here? I was lost. I was lost. And I've been in all three of those categories that we're talking about. The ungodly one, the, mor the, the moralist one, and the religious one. Oh, God, okay, God. <laughs> I was so religious, man, that if you misquote us, a scripture that wasn't that, that ain't what the Bible said. This said that. <laughs> if you didn't, so you didn't, you misquote Psalm twenty-three. Uh, uh, that, that he missed, they, they, she, she missed the portion of it. You know what the Lord said to me? He said, at least she's experiencing it. You ain't. <laughs> I shut my little, shut my little, shut my little religious mouth. Okay. <laughs> I read it. How many of y'all read experience it? I might not quote it right, but at least I got it working. So we have the story of the Pharisee. Remember him? He comes to God to pray. And it's interesting the way that Jesus used this story because he said, and the Pharisee prayed to himself. 
You got that son, right? You got it, right? He thought he was praying to God. He preached to himself, God, I thank you that I'm a tither. I thank you that I'm a church attender. I thank you that I go to faith I love. <laughs> I thank you this. I thank you that. And I'm not like, because see, the sinner was over here. The godly one, the ungodly one, probably just came out of the bar, you know, acting crazy, doing some stuff, smoking, coming down from a trip. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm not like this sinner. And the man said, the sinner, Jesus said, the sinner didn't even look up to heaven. He just looked down and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he said, that man went home justified. We all sinners. We all were sinners. Are you understanding? The next thing that the, the, uh, uh, the next sign of religion, say religion, is that the religion is, is brash. He sits as a judge while standing before the judge. Sits judging other people. I told you what God told me when I say, now he, he, he misquotes Psalm 23. <laughs> well, it's at least he experienced it. So here you are judging people when you're standing before the judge to be judged. What we don't understand is God's perfection versus our imperfection. What do you mean by that, Apostle? You don't know everything. You don't know the motives behind what people are doing. You don't know what they went through. Come on, say amen in here. And so we just, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, saints, we are on a faith by love walk. We're going to walk by faith, say walk by faith, and we're going to live by love. You don't know why, you don't know why people do what they do. You don't. You know what I'm saying? Only God, say only God. Only God knows everything. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows why people do what they do. You and I don't. We're supposed to be praying. Somebody, you know, they come in late. Oh, look at that. They always come in late. You don't know what went on. You don't know what went on at home. You don't know what went on with it. The, the car could have had a flat. Come on, say amen. Now, how many of y'all had that, that pharisaical thought in your head? And then you find out that they had a justifiable reason. Oh, somebody need to come to the altar. I see that right now. And you and you like, oh man, that oh I suck. <laughs> Am I talking to the right people on Facebook out there? All of us been there. We are to think the best about people. I'm telling you, I have made a decision. I am going to walk in love no matter what. I ain't too, what do you think about so? I don't think nothing about nobody because I got enough to deal with myself. I ain't got time to listen to what this preacher did and what this preacher said and all, all that crazy. I ain't got time. Look at me, I said, I ain't got time either. I am trying to keep Leroy together. Pleasing the Father. Nobody made me, made, you got all these watchdogs in the body of Christ. Who made you a watchdog? And say, you know, tell me what to do. He ain't believing right. What you believe? You know, you got them, right? Y'all see them. They're attacking Creflo. They're attacking this preacher, attacking that. You know, you, you, you listen. Jesus said, how are you going to get the speck out of somebody's eyes when you got a log up in yours? I'm just telling you what he said. Didn't he say that? He said, take the log out of your eyes, then maybe you can help me. You can't even see me. You got that log so big in your, so big a log up in your eye. How you going? Yeah, hey, let me help you. Man, you blind as a bat. <laughs> you can't help me. <laughs> Come on. Take care of your own. Sweep around your own front door. <laughs> I think that was, who that was, the William Brothers? Yeah. He probably doesn't know, all right? <laughs> so, 
Only God is perfect, right? Only God has the right to be judge. None of us. That don't, that don't mean now. I'm talking about the difference between judge and fruit inspection. Talk about that. <laughs> okay. Now, um, his, the religionist tends to judge people on their acts, but themselves on their intentions. Well, well, I, I meant to. <laughs> meant to. <laughs> you judging me because I didn't, and you meant to. All right. Everybody said brashness. And they have the watchdog mentality. They're trying to keep everybody else safe. Keep yourself safe. My job is not to keep y'all safe. I was talking to my dear brother today. My job is to give you the word. It's up to you to eat it. Up to you to drink it. What have you? Somebody, oh my God, oh my God. I talk about a bunch of prep houses. Oh my God, oh my people, they, 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 they uh, split like the Red Sea over this coronavirus. Oh, what can I do? I said, are you preaching the gospel? Yes, that's all you can do. They right. up to them. They setting under the word. I was talking about this with a man of God today. Setting under the word. I mean, it'd be something else you were setting under some foolishness, but you setting under the pure word of God in God's presence, God's power, God's promises, God's provision. Say amen. amen. I looked at him and said, hey, I'm not ashamed of the gods myself. I said, I preach the word and I sleep good at night. I came up doing that age of it, running around. I'm not the CIA. I'm not the FBI. I ain't running around to see what you're doing. Say amen in here. I'm sleeping at night. I'm preaching the word in season, out of season. All right? Lord, they say you can bring a horse to the water, can't make him drink. Now, <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Y'all ready? <laughs> fasten, fasten your seatbelt. Signs of religion, bitterness. Oof. Hating people badness over loving God's goodness. Hating people badness over loving God's goodness. How do you see the world? Do you got that? What well, is coronavirus? It's the judgment of God. Hurricane Katrina was a uh, what's what was what in Katrina was a judgment of God. Everything is judgment of God. My Bible said, for God so loved. Look at somebody say, whatever happened to the devil? Come on, look at somebody say, whatever happened to the devil? So you 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 look at them sinners. I used to be like that. I'm a reformed Pharisee. Do you think, listen, God asked me a question one time. He said, if you get to heaven and you see people there that you didn't, didn't think should be there, would you be happy or sad? So think about that. I had a lady one time, she, her and her husband, you know, they, was, they broke up and he had him another little he had him a little mistress on the side. I want my husband, me and my husband get it together. Hey, I want my husband, me and my husband get it together. I want me and my husband get it together. I said, uh, your husband say? No. I said, let's pray for his salvation. I ain't praying for his salvation. <laughs> sure enough, I can tell you who he is. <laughs> I'm not going to pray for him. He gets saved and she get him off after all the hell I went through with him. I'm telling you, that's what that woman said. Let the brother go to hell. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just telling you, hating people badness over loving the goodness of God. Ever said the goodness of God? Instead of, you know. Running it, I can see you know, I see myself in heaven and somebody, you know, like, oh my God, you made it. 
Oh, praise ye the Lord. Yes, yes. Come on. The goodness of God. The goodness. Say, God is good. God ain't trying to kill people. And he ain't going to be your hit man. He'll be your assassin. What do you think? I told you about. <laughs> I had this guy, man. He was a homosexual, racist, everything you name. And, and he was my supervisor. And he was on my case royale day after day. I mean, you talked about it on the way to our. <laughs> and I wanted to punch him out because they had that little devil on his face. You a man. Ain't nobody talk to you like this. Just, you know, he said, now when you hit him, you're going to have to whip him. You're going to have to go ahead and do it because <laughs> you know you're going to be fired. If you brush up against him, you're going to be fired. So you're going to have to get a good. I'm just being real. Look, somebody said, keep it real. Keep it real. Man, if this stuff don't work in life, let's go turn this into a bar or something. Say the word works. The word works. And I never forget what God said to me. I said, brother, well, let's see what this man do to me. No, I'm, I'm a man. <laughs> and I ain't gonna take too much more of this, brother. No, I'm here. You know what he told me to do? He said, pray for him. I said, what? I said, listen, I said, what? I pray you kill him. That's what I pray you get in an accident. He said, I'm, he said, and he took me to that scripture, pray for those who despitefully use you. And bless those that curse you. Somebody lift your hand and say, help, Lord, I need some help. I need your power. I'm telling you, oh, my God. But well, here's the principle. Who you want to be the most like. You adjust yourself to be like. Just like prophet said, God. Even though that man was doing all that to me, and I mean he was racist, he was he, he was demon possessed. I wanted to be like Jesus. So I did it. The father, I mean, oh my God, I had to put Leroy under. Say hallelujah. I said, Father, I bless him, Lord. Bless him. Bless him. <laughs> Amen. And I and I prayed the prayer. I did everything he told me to do. And a couple of weeks later, the man got promoted. He was no longer in my area. Praise ye the Lord. And a couple of months after that, he got a better job office in Texas. He's no longer in the plant. And the Lord said to me, He says, Son, I'm listen. He says, Son, I love everybody. Now, we say that until you experience that. He really loves everybody. Everybody say everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. everybody. I want y'all to get this. He said, I love, he said, I love him. I love him. I don't know what happened to him since then. He might get born. I might see him in heaven. I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? Bitterness, the bitterness. And the Bible talks about, in verse 4, it talks about the forbearance of God. Despises thou the forbearance, instead of forbearance. Forbearance is when God, how patient God is with people. Are you glad he was patient with you? Look, God, let me just give you a couple of examples of his patience. He, he was patient with the people in Noah's days. He waited 120 years before he sent the flood. 120 years, Sonia, knowing, knowing his sons were out there building that boat and, and telling people about it. He told Israel, he said, if you keep down the path you're going now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause you to go into captivity. 70 years in Babylon. He waited 800 years before it happened. Kept sending prophets and stuff to him. The Bible said the forbearance. And then there is the long suffering of God. Said the long suffering. God suffers long. Now God doesn't overlook. Because it will come. But he suffers long. Amen. 
Now, you remember that woman that taken in the daughter? And Jesus said, uh, Jesus said unto them, those people, said, now, okay, if y'all want to kill her, kill her. But the first one, the first one without sin, throw the stone, first stone. See, religious people, they don't want to see their own sin, their own fault. And so, thank God. I, I said one thing for these people. At least they had a conscience. Got that rock and said, oh, I can't. They probably, if you're in the act, come on now. You caught in the act, that's kind of suspicious right there. Ain't that right? Yeah, what you doing? <laughs> Somebody, I can't say what you doing. In the act, come on now. Sound like a setup to me. And uh, Jesus looked around and said, uh, woman, where are your accusers? He said, I have none. Lord, he said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Now, do you think that they left there, but you think they was happy because Jesus forgave that woman? Absolutely not. Now, let's talk about some people. How many of y'all know Ted Bundy? A serial killer. He was in prison, sentenced to death. He admitted to killing 30 women. 30 women. James Dobson. Anybody, anybody know James Dobson? James Dobson, famous Christian uh, uh, family. What is it? Some kind of family thing. Focus in the family. He asked James, uh, Ted Bundy asked for James Dobson to come and talk to him. He knew he was going to die. And he interviewed a man for hours, a couple hours. And led Ted Bundy into a, a prayer of salvation. And he got saved. James, James uh, Dawson said he was saved. He got saved. All right? And when, the, when it got into the news, oh, my God. Oh, were people happy because of the grace of God? No. Oh, it's fake. It's this. Oh. People was really mad because a serial killer got saved. Who you get upset about get saved? Who you get upset about if they got saved? Do we really believe in the grace of God? Let me put it in, in uh, totally... Contemporary terms. What about those policemen that killed that man, George Floyd? What if they gave their life to Christ? <laughs> you have to say, you have to resign. <laughs> you have to resign yourself. I don't know if I'm excited about it, but I accept it. Do you believe? Said, do I really believe in the grace of God? Do we think that this grace is for special people? Do we think that for that grace is for people that we lack? What about Kanye? I heard he's ran, running for president now. Like, is he really safe? Are you really safe? What makes you so special? And he not be special. Anybody here ever been done wrong by people? Dirt? Yeah, look at it. <laughs> we all got both hands up. <laughs> if I could, I'd levitate. Have my feet up. Yeah. The grace of God. If those people gave their life to Christ. Matter of fact, when I was running in the streets, we had a rival uh, uh, game. You know, Brick City versus Pioneer Home. Pioneer Home didn't go to Brick City. Brick City didn't come to Pioneer Home. And I seen this dude after, I, I remember when Dale said, you know, um, you give your life to Jesus and he take care of you. I said, man, I got some enemies out there. I said, this guy, I ain't no Jesus. You introduced me to this dude called Jesus. Come on, say amen. Let's just get out of this religious stuff. You got you to gotta get to know this person. And he invisible anyway, you know what I mean? He, in this place called heaven and been gone 2,000 years. Come on. Let's bring this stuff down to real life. 
He said, God, the Lord will take care of you. I said, the Lord is going to take care. Okay. Now I had my stuff. <laughs> and my razor. My peace. And you tell me, put all that down for this invisible God from some dude who died on the cross 2,000 years ago, supposed to came up, resurrected, he won't take care of me. Yeah. Okay. I did. I'm on the bus. He on the bus. We on the bus. Jesus, are you on the bus? <laughs> Lord, I need you on the bus. <laughs> And I said, oh, my God, what are we going to do? I walked over to him. He said, oh, what's up, man? I said, what's up, man? Then he said, he said man, we was crazy back then. Wasn't I said, yeah, we was crazy back then. I said, man, I, you know, I'm serving the Lord. And I said, praise ye the Lord. <laughs> Say amen. Do we believe? We say it all the time. No weapon. No weapon formed against you. Well, then why are you stressing out? Why are you flipping out? Why are you about to have a nervous breakdown? There's only one reason you don't believe. Say amen. Oh, my God. Religion. Say, so Lord, deliver me from religion. Mm -mm. The fourth thing, characteristic of religion, is blindness. Beholding other sin while blind to our own. It's interesting. I'm reading this book by uh, Chris Valentine. We got we to always remember core values. I said core values. I'm going to teach on core values. What are the core values of the kingdom of God? Three things. Faith, hope, and love. What are they? Faith, hope, and love. Paul said, and the greatest of this is what? Love. He wrote a whole chapter on what love is. Faith, hope, and love. Whatever we do, so whatever I do, it has to have those three components in it. Because without it, the Bible says, without faith, you cannot please God. I'm up here teaching now by faith. They were singing and ministering by faith. Why did we do it? Because we love God. I don't want nobody up here doing nothing in this church you don't love God. And the Bible says, if you say you love God and hate your brother and sister, you are a liar. In other words, God measures your love for him by how you treat others. Me and God, me and God. I don't know what God you're talking about. Don't get it by yourself. Me and God. You are deluded. You are deceived. Because the God we serve loves. Say amen. We're going to look in Romans chapter 5. For the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You want to know, you, 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 you want to, you want to uh, uh, experience God? You walk in love. Faith worketh. By what? No love, no faith. Well, I'm, I'm going to believe in God for this so I can show everybody how spiritual I, I am. You ain't getting it. Not from God, you ain't. The devil might accommodate you. <laughs> Blindness. Listen. Here's, a, here's a, a principle for you. We view the world not as it is, but as we are. We view the world not as it is, but as we are. What kind of God, how, if somebody asks you about God, what kind of God do you describe? Because you describe the God that you are. If he's a mean, vindictive God, a judgmental God already, already, you know, always ready to pounce on people, non-forgiving God, then that's the kind of person you are. But he's a loving God, a forgiving God, a faithful God, a God of grace. Amen? I'm going to end on this last thought. Somebody asked me. Do you believe in eternal security? I said, I absolutely believe in eternal security. I believe that those who are born again are eternally secure. 
question is, are you born again? Oh, well, you did say, you know, I said, the, 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 the issue is never on God's side. God ain't never going to get an attitude and kick you to the curb. Never. Everybody said never. never. And I said, if the new birth is a birth, how many times can you be birthed? If it's really a birth, right? You're born again. And we said God is omniscient. You're not going to do anything that catches God by surprise. David said, you know, my thoughts are far off even before I think them, even before I say them, before I do. You already know. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen? Say, I'm a child of God. And the Lord said to me, will you throw your children away? I said, absolutely not. I don't know anything my children could do that would cause me to throw them away. He said, if you want to throw your children away, what makes you think I'm going to throw mine away? Somebody said, I'm eternally secured. Yeah. Hallelujah. Have your children always behaved the way you wanted them to? All of us can say amen on that name. Those are who are parents. We know. Have your children said stuff that they came back later to regret? Absolutely. Have you said stuff that you came back to regret? God is not some vindictive God is just going to, well, you remember, you remember? Matter of fact, the Bible says that uh, as far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgression. From, and that right said? Never remember again. And if you come to him and say, God, I'm, you know, you, you know we, we talked about First John, First John, didn't we? First John 1 and 9, if I confess my why, sin, he's faithful and just to do what? Forgive me and cleanse me from what? Every parent should be putting together a recovery plan for their child. When my children came to me, I don't, don't want to get too, but when they came to me with their, what they did, I didn't say, you're no longer a get. I disown you. I said, you made a mistake. You know better. How many of us did self? We knew better. Yeah. So you know better. I said, but we're going to put together a recovery plan for you. If a prodigal come to himself, the father put the robe on, the father put the ring on his, on his finger, the father put the shoes on his feet and had a party. The only one that had a problem with it was the elder brother. Instead of rejoicing that his, that, his, that his younger brother had came out of that lifestyle, he's mad. I'm believing God for all our prodigals to come back. Y'all believing with me? We're not going to be bringing up the past. The past is forgiven. Y'all come on back. There's love in this house. I, was telling, I, said, I told that story to a pastor, and I said, I told you what the pastor said. I said, what would you do? He said, hell no, ain't no way in the world I'm going to give my child a get away. I'm going to forsake and abandon my son. And I know that might be a swear word to some of y'all, but Jesus literally went to hell so that we can go to heaven. Amen? Stand to your feet. Remember this, family, who God is to us, and who God is to us, he will become through us. Mm. What kind of God do you want people to see? I want them to see a God of compassion, a God of love, a God of understanding. Amen? Lift your hands, family. Let's not be moralists or religionists. Let's be believers. I'm so glad 
They, you know, people say, Jesus needs to come right away. I'm glad Jesus waited. How many of you are glad that he waited long enough for you to get born again? I still believe that there's a great harvest coming. I still believe that there's many other sons and daughters out there that God wants to see come into the kingdom. Let's believe for those. Amen. Now, may the Lord God bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For the Lord God, he is your son and shield. He gives you grace and glory. That's the God we serve. And no good thing. Said no good thing. And no good thing will he withhold from us because we are in Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Until we meet again, let all God's sons and daughters say amen, amen. and amen. God bless your family. We love you. Uh, we'll see you on Friday for the Holy Spirit encounter. Have a great, great week.